What's going on smart people? I've made two videos on what you can expect for your first and second year as a physics major. Today we're going to continue that into what you can expect in your third year. Now the list of classes that I'm assuming you'll have taken before getting to this point is getting a little bit long, so I'm not going to mention them all here. But if you're unsure of what classes I'm assuming you'll have taken, go ahead and check out my video on the second year physics. With that being said, let's get started. Now the first semester of year three, you're gonna take your first course in E&M, and I'm not talking about university level physics E&M. Now for this class, you have to become fluent in vector and multivariable calculus. You're constantly dealing with continuous charge distributions that are arranged in different geometries and adding them up in different ways, and this is just screaming Calc 3. Calc 3 is so important for E&M that the Griffith's E&M book, chapter one, is a vector calc review. The first semester kicks off with a bunch of electrostatics, so charges that aren't moving. You spend a good amount of time on Gauss's law, which is represented by a surface integral, and there we have, right off the bat, Calc 3 making its way into E&M. But the big chunk of E&M 1 is electrostatics. We didn't get to magnetostatics until the very end of E&M 1. Personally, I thought this class got a little bit difficult once we started talking about electric fields and matter. So watch out for that. And this is also the first class that I started actually spending hours on my homework assignments. e &M is a tough class, but it is a fun class, and it's very rewarding once you actually solve these problems. In e &M 2, you start talking about charges that are moving relative to each other. Now from a stationary reference frame, you see those moving charges as being length contracted, meaning the concentration of charges increases. Now depending on the sign of these charges, they might attract or repel each other, and that's what you learn to call magnetism. So in e 2 you just learned that magnetism is a consequence of your reference frame, which inherently leads to you spending a good amount of time learning special relativity. Honestly, I could spend a whole video just talking about e and in itself, but now I'm going to move on to thermal and statistical mechanics. I made a video on the three hardest physics classes that I've taken, and this was on the list. Now the way this class is taught highly depends on the university that you go to, but at Old Dominion, about two-thirds of the semester was spent on classical thermodynamics, and the last third was on statistical mechanics. And I personally struggled a lot with the classical thermo part. Keeping track of what's an intensive slash extensive variable and doing partial derivatives where you hold one quantity constant, knowing that if the system expands, what's being held constant for that part and what assumptions can you make on different parts of the energy of the system, it's a lot of bookkeeping. Believe me, there's plenty of ways to complicate an ideal gas problem. Now the statmec part was pretty fun, counting things like macrostates and microstates. It really felt like we were branching into the quantum world a little bit more. So classical thermo is a macroscopic description of thermodynamics, and statmech is where you go to the micro scale and use statistics on those microscopic systems to develop the same picture. Now physics majors are typically only a couple classes away from a minor in math, so at this time I also took a course in partial differential equations and real analysis. Partial differential equations is the love child of linear algebra, calc 3, and differential equations. Real analysis, you do a lot of proofs. Just remember to let epsilon be greater than zero. Now this last class I was tempted not to include in this video because I pushed it back to my fourth year of physics, but a lot of people don't do that, so I thought I'd include it anyways. And this is none other than BuzzFeed's favorite topic to talk about, quantum mechanics. In quantum mechanics one, you spend a good amount of time gaining familiarity with the Schrodinger equation, which is a second order partial differential equation. You find out very quickly that how hard the equation is to solve depends on the potential that you're given. You start with the infinite square well, work your way up to the harmonic oscillator, and then you also learn how to solve the Schrodinger equation in spherical coordinates. Now if you don't see it in e &M, this might be the first time that you're introduced to special functions. You can think of these as just solutions to really important differential equations. Quantum demands that you become very familiar and comfortable with linear algebra. What does it mean for an operator to act on a column vector? Things like that. Second semester quantum, you learn a lot about how to find out what the answer almost is. If someone asks you what the ground state energy of a system is, you'll learn how to tell them, well, it's less than that. If none of this makes sense yet, don't worry, you'll get there and you'll look back at this video and be like, oh, that's what Andrew was talking about. The last thing that I want to talk about is that this is generally the year that students start to apply for physics internships. Whether that be RU programs or SULI, you need to get an internship if you want to apply for graduate school. I have an entire video talking about how to apply for these internships, so feel free to check that out, but I'm going to end the video here. Here's a list of all the classes that I talked about during this video. I hope you feel that you have a better understanding of what to expect for your third year of physics. Let me know in the comments section if you did, and I'll see you guys there.